and you know that, i mean that may be taking it too far but in re reality that is a lot that is how a lot of people who serve the kingdom of dark darkness operate there's no good in them hi everyone and welcome back for another video in today's video as you guys can tell by the title i'm going to be talking to you guys about the, being in an isolation season so with that being said let's go right ahead and get started <laughs> guys so i had some trouble filming this video this is probably like my fifth sixth time trying to film this video i just been having trouble trying to film this video so i really hope that this is the last time that i have to re-record this video but um god has definitely been calling me to create this video talking discussing the isolation season and i think it's because it's been weighing on my heart a lot and it's something that we all experience and if you haven't experienced it experienced it you will eventually but being in the isolation seasons is is basically where god kind of i don't want to say tear you apart from the world because that's obviously not what he does but it's basically where god kind of removes you from certain people removes you from certain environments and basically just you know isolate you so that you can spend more time with him and you can get to understand him more and you can hear him when he speaks and i definitely feel like for a very 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 long time i've been in an isolation season i honestly feel like i'm still in an isolation season and i feel that way because i constantly feel very lonely and it didn't bother me at first when i was back in back in college was probably back in my first year of college rather it was probably the first time that i actually had like friends you know people that i call talk to you know we hang out after class and etc and then you know once the years passed went on and once the years passed by i didn't have anyone no friend no family no nothing it was just me my kids and my husband and it still is that way and i for a very long time i was able to you know overcome those feelings of loneliness and not let it bother me but now that i'm getting older and i'm starting to understand the importance of having friendships and you know being apart from your family you know being spending time outside of your home it's becoming extremely um like it's be it's it's starting to come very hard fighting those feelings of feeling lonely and i know that you know being in isolation season is something that god isn't doing to punish us but sometimes it feels like a punishment and i say that because it feels like you know i've done so much over the years i um not just for myself but for others and i've always been a very genuine loving soul i've always been there for you know the, my um, ex-friends and you know family and it just seems like i still I like I, I'm still not getting that in return and I know a part of the reason why I necessarily don't have a lot of friends well why I don't have friends or you know don't have people that I can you know call and talk and hang out with is probably because I've been a stay-at-home mom since my oldest daughter was born she's nine years old now so I pretty much been a stay-at-home mom for nine years and being a stay being a stay at home mom comes with spending a lot of time with your kids in the house and there was a point in time you know where my husband and I you know we didn't have a car to get to and from places you know and I'm still not even driving so I still spend majority of my time in the house so it's hard to make connections with other moms or even make friends even if they're whether the woman is a mom when you're in the house and you know i try to tell myself that maybe this is for the best you know eventually when, when i reach that point of you know getting out the house more driving and everything like that then i'll have time and be able to commit to you know having building genuine and true friendships but it's becoming extremely hard like some days it's like god like is this all my life is gonna be you know just being a mom being a wife and that's it not having any friends girlfriends or nothing like it really i had really reached a point where i actually broke down and cried because i had got so overwhelmed um i believe it was i was trying to pray one night and you know i told my kids hey you know i'm gonna pray 
and you know they were making noise doing a lot of stuff and basically it was it was very hard trying to concentrate and pray so i got so overwhelmed i broke down and i started crying and i was just asking god i was like god is this gonna be my life like like is this is it just is i'm just gonna be a mom and wife like i'm not gonna never be able to get away from my kids and i i wasn't saying that in a where i felt i like i was saying that from an emotional standpoint of view because i was so overwhelmed literally all i wanted to do in that moment was pray and i felt like i couldn't do that like i have moments where i feel like i don't have any well i don't feel that way it's the truth i never have any peace and quiet with the exception of now but yeah i had got to a breaking point i'm just asking god you know like why don't i have any friends you know i want to make friends and etc and i just feel like i still haven't reached that point i will say though i do have two um, for, um people that i two i do have two women that i consider friends one her name is evelyn and the other name is yosa and she actually lives here in georgia but you know we live well right now we're like 20 minutes apart from each other but we both live obviously different lives so it's very hard to try to you know meet up and connect in person when you know i'm a stay-at-home mom and she works a nine to five monday through friday so it's like you know but you know besides that i haven't actually had like you know friend like my type of friend you know i want to be able to call when i um when i need to you know call we all, we're constant we're in constant communication you know we get to hang out it don't have to be a consistent thing obviously because you know we're still grown adults and have our own lives but you know being able to hang at hang out at least twice a month you know i come to your house you come to my house you know i, I want friendships like that you know i i enjoy having um i enjoy you know actually building a connection with people you know i'm not one of those people that can settle for just texting you know i feel like texting is very impersonal it this it's just it's very impersonal to me um a lot of people may not feel that way but i feel like i feel that way for me because there's a point in times where you can be texting someone and you guys are texting back and forth and then they stop texting and then they decide to text you the next day and it's like you know so i i i crave i won't say i crave but i enjoy having you know genuine and loving connections outside of social media outside of texting and i feel like i haven't had that yet and it makes me question you know like is it me god like is it something that i'm doing wrong is it something within me that i need to work on and i'm constantly asking god that and i haven't i feel like he haven't answered the question yet but it's just very lonely at times and i know that you know being a child of god you're never alone because god presence is always with you but you guys know what i mean and i just i don't know like i just feel like i want to be able to just have friends you know be able to go out and hang out with friends you know go shopping go out to eat you know um just talk about jesus talk about god you know have genuine loving um, conversations you know um we can literally talk about anything it don't even have to be about god it could be about the sky is blue <laughs> you know just random conversations and you know i just i just want that and it doesn't feel good when you constantly see other people have have the relationships with their friends that you want and it just makes me feel bad about myself i try not to obviously compare myself to others because everyone is in a different season in their lives and you never knew how long that person what took to get to that point of where they have genuine and loving people around them so i try not to you know um put myself down but but it's very hard because like I said, I've been a stay-at-home mom for nine years, and I haven't actually had a genuine friendship since. Well, since before that, and I, you know, I'm just, I'm just constantly asking God, like, you know, when is it gonna be my turn? When is it gonna be my turn? And I just want to say that, 
when you are called to an isolation season you want to make sure that you are prepared to be set apart from others because there's gonna be there's gonna be a point in your isolation season where you're gonna literally feel so alone that you're gonna just break down and you're gonna cry you're gonna feel like something is genuinely wrong with you but it's really nothing wrong with you this is just how god works this is a part of god's plan for us you know i think a part of the reason why god calls us to an isolation season is so that we can see the things that we couldn't when we're around certain people or when we're in certain environments and that's actually that's actually what god has done for me you know god had when god you know took me away from a lot of people that was in my life i was actually able to sit down and you know understand that you know there were things about myself that i needed to work on and it wasn't necessarily bad things but it was just things that i needed to work on to protect myself in the future you know i can see certain things and people that wouldn't be healthy for me or wouldn't be good for me instead of you know waiting until they actually do something and then we just end the friendship you know and i'm the one hurt because that usually is what happened you know all my friendships usually ended in me being the one getting hurt you know some people even just randomly stopped talking to me and i didn't even know like i didn't know i thought we were cool and no apparently the people that hang with them said we that i said this i said that and i'm just like okay you know and a lot of times god tries to prevent those things from happening so that we won't suffer the pain that comes with the people we love the most hurting us so that's another reason why god kind of calls us to isolation season is he's, he's trying to remove us from out of certain people's lives in certain environments before it's too late you know before we get to that breaking point of being so hurt and so um and in so much pain and then we run to him you know and i just want to tell you all you just just be prepared when god calls you to an isolation season be mentally physically and emotionally prepared to walk away from the things and the people that god is removing you from because he's not doing it to hurt you he's simply doing it to protect you and for a very long time you know um i i couldn't see that you know before i had actually gave my life to christ you know god had already um removed me from certain situations and certain environments that was hurting me for a very long time i couldn't understand why you know i thought that it was something you know wrong with me like you know what's wrong with me why can i never have a genuine friend or why can i never be part of the group part of the pack you know and for a very long time i was so angry and so bitter and it caused me to become unrecognizable I couldn't recognize myself you know I started to develop um, traits in me that was never in me until I suffered you know from pain and hurt by others and for a very long time I really couldn't understand it like, I couldn't grasp it I couldn't understand why I was the black sheep you know why I was always isolated like why I was never a part of the group or you know a part of the family you know I was I always felt like the one that just never fit in you know that awkward person that just never fit in everybody just don't like you can't relate to nobody and i felt like that for a very long time and then once i actually did give my life to christ god actually spoke to me and let me know you know why he did what he did and i was able to when i when i heard from god and i understood what god did why god did what, what he did I was able I was able to heal and overcome all of those um, self-doubt and just overcome all of the people that was in my life that I had to that God removed me from because it wasn't to you know hurt me it was to save me and to you know elevate me because a lot of times the reason why God also caused us to an isolation season is because sometimes the people that you're around can stunt your growth and a lot of times we don't realize it we think it's just us you know oh something's wrong with me or oh, i'm not smart enough i'm not good enough or oh, i need such and such amount of money i need to do this no sometimes the people around you are stunning your growth and a lot of times we don't want to hear that because we're so it's like we have an attachment to the people around us and we feel like if we let them go that it's going to hurt them more than it hurt us but in actuality by holding on to people that has no good intentions for you it's actually hurting you more than it's hurting them 
See, they could lose you today and have another you by tomorrow. And that's why God calls, that's why God tries to remove us from those people as fast as possible. Because if we wait until it's too late, like until they, they do something so evil, so just out of the blue that you wouldn't expect it from them. That's going to cause, like, that is going to call you, cause you so much pain and suffering. Like, and that's what God tries to prevent. He always warns us before destruction. And that's why God tries to, like, as soon as you get, you say, God, I want to change. God works. He moves quickly. And you won't notice it until you actually gone through whatever it is that God is trying to take you through. And then you come out of it and you're like, dang, I'm so happy that God did what he did. But yeah, a lot of times the people around you can stunt your growth. And people don't want it. Like, one thing that I can say I've learned while being um, while being a child of God is that everything is spiritual. Everything is deep. And a lot of times people don't, people say, well, it's not that deep. No, it is very much so deep because everything is spiritual. Like we don't, we are spiritual beings. We like everything is spiritual. Like things, when things happen to us, it happens to us spiritually before it starts to manifest into our actual physical world. Like it happens to us spiritually. And you know, sometimes when things are happening to you, you don't see anything like you you don't see anything physically happening that could cause what's happening to you because it's spiritual that's why god removes us from people that we're not spiritually aligned with you know the devil and <laughs> the, the demons and angels cannot sit at the same table and that is the same situation when it comes to god isolating you from certain people those people are part of the kingdom of darkness and you aren't so that's why god removes you from that from those people because they're they're going to try to harm you they're either going to try to harm you and probably try to put a curse on your life put a spell on your life or they're they can go as far as to even try to kill you and you know that i may that may be taking it too far but in re reality that is a lot that is how a lot of people who serve the kingdom of dark darkness operate there's no good in them maybe if they get delivered it's possibly still good in them but when there's when they're living for the kingdom of darkness they don't have there's nothing good in them they they literally their whole life is made to cause chaos it's created to be you know to cause harm to others so when god removes you from certain people it could be because they're studying your growth. They want to try to keep you in the same place so that you won't elevate and surpass what they are. Sorry, guys. But another reason why God calls us to an isolation season is because he wants us to work on our mental, physical, and emotional well-being. Whether we realize it or not, when you are a child of God, you are called to be emotionally mature. You're called to be physically healthy. And you're called to be mentally healthy as well. And a lot of times when God isolates us from people, um, it's sometimes it could be to work on ourselves. And I think this is another reason why God also isolated me because I needed to work on myself mentally, physically, and emotionally. I had allowed all of the pain and all of the suffering, the trauma and disappointment that I went through to turn me into someone I didn't know. God needed me to recognize who I was in the moment so that I could work on becoming the person that he created me to be and not the person that I created myself because of the trauma and the pain that I went through. And a lot of times when God calls you to work on your physical, mental, and work on your physical, mental, and emotional well-being, it's gonna, it can be very, very hard because God is going to reveal to you a lot of things that you, that you don't want to believe. And that's a part of being emotional mature is understanding that God will never lead, God will never lie, and God will never tell us something if it wasn't for our own good. And a lot of times we delude ourselves into thinking that there's nothing wrong with us. You know, we're perfect. We don't need to work on this. We don't need to work on that. And we really do. I mean, just think about it. A lot of times, a lot of, a lot of times when we get into certain situations and we see how we react, that can be 
that can be a reason why God wants to isolate you because he wants you to stop reacting off of emotion and start reacting off of logic. Because a lot of times we get into situations and circumstances and we operate out of our emotions and our emotions can be very detrimental to us. And when you're not emotionally mature, like you're going to always just either say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing in that moment because you're moving off of your emotions. And that's not that's not how God wants us to operate because because God knows that our emotions is always changing. You know, we can be happy one minute, sad the next. And because our emotions always changing, it can cause us to make the wrong decisions when it comes to certain situations and circumstances. And because of that, God doesn't want that for us because sometimes when we are being led by our emotions, that can be a part that that can be a way for the enemy to attack us. You know, the enemy, when the enemy still has a foothold in our life, when we operate out of emotions that is that can be a way for us to give the enemy that fo foothold in our lives and this may sound you know like far-fetched but it's the truth you know when god when you are emotionally mature you're able to look at a situation from not just a physical standpoint but from a spiritual standpoint as well and then you're able to react based off of that you know based off what it is versus wanted to just clap back or get your point across or just you know be over it you know so when god calls you to isolate your season he wants you to become emotionally mature and that's also something that i would say that god is heavily working on me um with is <laughs> being emotionally mature i've definitely gotten a lot better but i still have moments where i literally just Ugh. and it's not it's not i i don't do it intentionally it's just when you're used to reacting off of your emotions it's natural to react off of your emotions when you're faced with the situation or problem so naturally you know i sometimes react out of my emotions not realizing wait hold on you know i need to you know think about this situation for a moment i need to you know think before i actually you know react but also you want to make sure that you are in a mentally balanced place in your life because sometimes we don't realize that when we're and when we're like surrounded by certain people or when we're in certain environments we don't realize that a lot of times those people in those environments have can be detrimental to our mental well-being and once god removes us from those um and once god removes us from those environments and from those people we start to crave those people or we start to crave being in chaos and a lot of times it's because we've been in it for so long that we don't know anything different and that's why God call, isolates us is because he wants us to get out of that mental prison. You know, he wants us to stop being dependent on people that clearly has no good intentions for us. And he wants to stop us depending on environments that's filled with chaos and filled with pain and filled with suffering. I mean, it happens to a lot of people. You know, we've, we've been, we be in so many you know um we we trap ourselves in environments that's no good to us because that's all we know but when god isolates us he wants to break those chains and those bondages offers off of our mental well-being and that comes with being isolated from those environments and those people and you know it's going to seem like hell <laughs> when you're apart when you're set apart from those environments and people but once you get to that place of peace and truly understanding why being in that being in those environments and being around those people is not good for you like when you when god see the thing about god god will reveal to you everything like once he has your attention he's going to slowly reveal to you everything that has like everything and he's going to start revealing to you things that the people have done or the environment have done to your mental well-being that you didn't realize until you're out of that you know environment and that's exactly what God did for me as well, is he took me, and when he removed me from those environments and those people, he, you know, set me down and he showed me, like, look, like, this is because of what this person did to you or what this person said to you, you're mentally, like, you mentally have a, have a, um, what was it, you mentally have an attachment issue, you know, you want to be around people that's not good for you because that's your family or you know you know them for so long and 
you know once god really started revealing me to once god really started revealing to me the their intentions and started revealing to me all of the things that they've done to me it, it like it was almost like wow like how did i miss that you know i've always felt like you know i was someone that could read the room but apparently not especially when it comes to certain people a lot of times we ignore the red flags we ignore all of the things that they're doing wrong and we just choke it up to oh that's their personality or you know that's just them and no no it's not they're literally evil <laughs> so when god calls when god is revealing things to you just be mindful of what he's showing you so that you don't go back to those people in those environments that wanted to harm you or wanted to bring you down sorry god i don't know what's going on with my nose but also god calls us to work on our physical well-being as well and i'm not talking about you know getting dressed putting on a nice outfit you know that's all fine and nanny but your physical appearance is you know your physical appearance is a big part of who you are as well but um you know when god wants us to work on our physical well-being he wants us to take care of us he wants us to take care of our bodies you know um look think about the food we're consuming you know think about the things that we're putting on our face because a lot of times these things that we're eating and the even the makeup that we wear body wash you know all of those things a lot of times they have a lot of demonic symbolism in it and it's literally made from the kingdom of darkness and sometimes he wants us to purge from those things because it can harm us i mean it is that also may seem far-fetched but it's the truth i mean i recently found out oreos had dem demonic symbols all on the oreo i don't think i ate an oreo again i mean i might have did i don't know y'all but i'm being honest though but i might have still ate one but i honestly stay away from it now but you know you won't know until god reveals it to you till he open your spiritual eyes but that is all that i have for you guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did be sure to give it a big thumbs up and if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this and also leave me a comment letting me know if you enjoy videos like this and i'll be sure to create more and as always i'll see you guys in the next